Hello, I'm Dread Zero, and welcome back to Need for Speed Underground 2, Part 19. Now, last episode, and to be perfectly honest, I've been doing a few races in the in-between, because there's not really all that much that happens in Coal Harbor East. I mean, as you can see, I can never remember which button was the actual map screen, but we've done most of the stuff in Jackson Heights, and we're at approximately 12 out of 35 races. So without further ado, and without me watering on much more, let's get some racing done at some speed, because you don't race snails. Well, you can actually race snails, but why? Why would you race snails, of all things? Okay, let's see, we've got a skyline, and I forgot the rest, I think I saw another skyline, doesn't matter, though, we're here for performance, and I've left the start. And the gears, I have not played this in about two weeks, so I might be a little rusty. Yep, it's a pair of skylines, and what appears... No, wait, it's a trio of Skylines. We have three Skylines in the room. I don't know why it's important. No, you bloody, bloody on toast. Good shift off the line. Already up to 60 miles an hour. Why did my brain stammer on 60? I don't know either, but let's keep this going so that they don't try and box me into a train this time. What am I, British Rail? Okay, enough ranting, and let's get back to speaking kind of normally. Whoop, dodge that door. Gotta dodge the doors. Don't want to break them through to the other side. Tony Hawk's underground, ladies and gentlemen. It's been what I've been playing most of this time. Before you were asking, hey, Dread, why don't you do a Tony Hawk's Underground Let's Play? Because A, I've only got Tony Hawk's Underground 2, and B, the PC version does not work with controllers very well. And I'm not playing Tony Hawk's games on a bloody keyboard. Thank you very much. Good night. So... After that bit of ranting and with my RX-7 giving a nodding back blast in approval, it's time to, you know, get some more street cross races done because, well, I feel like we didn't show off the 240 enough last time because, well, we spent so long tuning it and you only got to see it in one action, so it could have just been a fluke. I mean, hell, did you see how complicated that course looked? That'd be a nightmare. Let's see, we've got a TT, a Supra, and what? Yep, an RX-7. This should be fun. For me. And we're off. Slow start, round the full hairpin. Is it a hairpin? Yeah, it's a hairpin if it's a full 360, isn't it? No, it's 180 is a hairpin. 360 is a corkscrew, isn't it? What the hell are you on about, Dread? I don't know, but it's how Let's Plays are made, apparently, so let's keep going. And I'm having a conversation to myself while I'm driving very quickly in a 240SX on a track in a very old racing game that probably nobody's caring about because everyone's probably fanboying out about the new XCOM game or whatever the hell's this week's flavour of the month. I know, I'm topical, I am. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, this thing is, well, still as fast as ever. And we're only on the first lap and we're nearly three seconds in the lead. This isn't a race, it's a massacre. It's a bloodbath. It's so much of a bloodbath. You can fill a swimming pool with it. And then invite Dracula over for his summer holidays in the very literal definition of the term pool bar. Which has a point with Dracula. Okay, okay, I've just had a really weird thought, okay? Let's say you're playing The Sims, okay? And you create a vampire. He doesn't have to be Dracula. But let's say he's in a swimming pool, okay? Because there's nothing in vampire law that says vampires can't swim, okay? They're not John Marston or Raz from Psychonauts. So here's the thing. What would happen if you put a vampire in a swimming pool at night and then took away the ladder just as dawn was starting to happen? You know, just as it was starting to get light. I mean, would the water protect him from the sunlight so as long as he could hold his breath he'd be okay? Or would he still burn under there because it's the sun? Oh no. We might have to get science in on this, and I don't have a lab coat. Or a wig that's quite the right shade of blue to look like Rick Sanchez, but then again, I'd have to escape from intergalactical prism first, which could be a bit difficult, seeing as I'm currently recording a video. Well, not record. Well, recording the voiceover for a video. What the hell am I on about? Oh well, let's keep driving, because we're almost done here. I mean, look at the speed of this thing! Look at the idiot driving it as well. We're fucking... Oop, didn't need to swear. I'm trying to ease up on swearing, by the way, so, oh, well, nuts to you. Yeah, so we're 13 seconds ahead over four laps. Make that 14 seconds if this comes out. I'm not even in the right gear half the time, and we just wipe the floor. 
I'm going to start calling the rivals in street cross races mops, because that's what they do. You wipe the floor with them. Carbon body kit. I'm sorry, I don't like carbon in this game. If I wanted carbon, I'd go play a Need for Speed game with supercars and Tokyo Drift inspired canyon dueling, but that's probably going to happen later, if not at all. And we got a circuit race here. Let's see what the track's like before we make a decision on whether or not we get the RX-7 out for this one, shall we? Yeah, let's get the RX-7 out. Back in the RX-7, also known as the Dreadmobile, mainly because flip-up headlights are cool, and mainly because I've actually... Well, you saw the side view of that. That is the Dread Zero Gaming logo, as best you'll get on a 2004-era racing game. Let's see, Hyundai Coupe, I think that was an Audi or an Eclipse, and I can't be asked to see, because I am winning! Oop. And I overcooked the goose. Much like Christmas Day, but we don't talk about that, not until I... Well, if you've ever summoned an eldritch goose into your kitchen, you'll know how much of a pain in the backside it is to clean up after it. I mean, have you ever tried to get Elder God crap out of linoleum? You need to use, like, five tons of... Blessed Terps, and even Len, the stink still lingers for a week. God, it was a nightmare. I had to pay off the bishops just to keep their mouths shut. I'm not insinuating I let an elder god into my Christmas at Kitchen. My Christmas at Kit. What the hell are you on about again, Brain? Oh, yeah. Christmas and elder gods. I mean, could you imagine Cthulhu at a sushi bar? What the hell am I talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously, seriously, that would... If anyone wanted to have a lifetime membership at a sushi bar, it'd be Cthulhu. I mean, all the raw fish you could eat, you'd have... Because you can't exactly bar an eldritch god from a but from a restaurant, could you? Because, well, he's the size of a bloody restaurant. You, he's just going to say, right, if I can't make the restaurant c come to the restaurant, I'll make the restaurant come to me, and he'll flick out one of his chin tentacles and basically drag the entire restaurant into his gaping maw and go, nom, nom, nom. I've just realised I've made an Elder God go nyom 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 like an anime character. Actually, that's an idea. Why don't I make an anime? And with that, most anime fans' heads have just exploded. Seriously though, seriously though, why don't we make Eldritch God High School? I'll let that sink in, because it certainly needs time to sink in with me, because it is that fucking s Damn it, Dread, you're supposed to not be swearing. Oh yeah. Anyway. I have no idea. Maybe have Van Helsing be the janitor or something. I don't know. I have... Hell, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. So, not much difference there. Ha <laughs> ha! But yes, second lap, and we are still in the lead. Not by a lot, but enough to say, yep, we's winning. And keep on going. So, those of you who have brain cells have probably realised... I've just hit a pickup truck while I was thinking, so maybe I'm not amongst that number, but oh well. Keep driving, don't let that bloody Pontiac win. Otherwise I'll have wasted quite a lot of your time and you will not like that. No, you want good ways to waste time. Like watching movies. Or video games. Or watching movies of video games played by people who have no idea what they're on about. Like me! Ha ha! Subscribe button somewhere on the screen. Hit it, please. Okay. So... Back to reality was a very good Red Dwarf episode. Back no, bad red, bad red. Stay on topic, stay on topic. You're not on the Death Star Trench run yet. Okay. So what am I gonna play after this is probably gonna be a big question. Because, well, I'm almost done. Now here's the thing. I am going to be changing to a slightly different format, okay? Rather than it being three episodes of season one and two episodes of season two a week. It'll be two episodes of one season, two episodes of another season, and two episodes of a first season with a wild card on Sunday. Okay? So that way I can basically do a few videos that there's nowhere near enough to make a full series out of, but still say, hey, this game's cool and I want to talk about it. But enough for me to go, hey, you don't like this Sniper Elite 3, that's okay. I've got a really absurd World War II game coming that's not really World War II in the slightest. A few of you in the audience are probably going, Oh, he's going to be playing that. Yeah. Yeah. Because to be perfectly honest, when I had to reformat my PC to get a few things working, it also ate the save file for that game, so I'd be starting completely and utterly fresh. 
So that's either a good thing or a bad thing, considering I know what's going to happen in the story, but, well, I'll leave that to your imagination, what's going to happen. Also, also, I will be saying I am going to be getting an XCOM LP going. It'll be a bit longer than sort of the usual 15 to 20 minutes episodes I aim for, but I'm aiming for it to be sort of XCOM Enemy Within's LP at least, to be finished just in time for me to hit the word download on Steam and basically then play it. God, I remember when Enemy Unknown was a brand new game. I feel old. But yeah. So, one of the games is going to be XCOM. Okay? That's probably going to be what I'm going to record sometime this week. If you include Sunday as me being the biggest procrastinator in the world. Now, anyway, I applied to Guinness World Records for a sort of chance at being legitimately the world's biggest procrastinator. But that requires so much effort. Okay, bad jokes aside, we are four seconds in the lead. And I still have no idea what the gibbering hell I am gibbering about. Business as usual, then. <laughs> So, yeah. I mean, if you've got any suggestions of people you want me to name characters after an XCOM enemy unknown, I'm, I'm willing to listen. I mean, I've got a rough short list. I mean, I'm thinking one of them is going to be Harry Hart and always wears a hat. I know, I know. I've watched Kingsman too many times. One of them is not going to be Otto Zander because I'm not frigging cheating. And, uh, you... Ooh, names, 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 names. Ah, yes, ah, yes. The name that I would personally give myself. Balthazar Tough Bollock. Because, come on. That is the sort of name you hear, you expect to sort of see sort of Van Helsing's prodigy. Mm, yes, hello, I'm Van Helsing, and this is Balthazar Tough Bollock. It's such an awesome name. It... No, wait, no, wait. Balthazar Tough Bollock and... Ooh, I need another name. Another... Really badass, badass surname. Ooh, need to think of one. Ah, yeah, got it. Balthazar Tough Bollock and Melchior Tank Crusher. Ta no, that sounded better in your head, Dread. Oh, well, I'll probably think of a better name, but... Hey, sounds badass. It works. It's staying. That's the way it's going to be. Anyway, we'll just do a street cross race by the... Beacon Hills Body Shop, and we'll call it an episode while my voice recovers from having to shout a bit too much, because, as you can probably tell, I am doing this, as usual, on the 11th hour. No, I'm not doing this in my RX-7, because it's got some grip, but it's a bit like... It's a bit like Patrick Stewart if he was a tyre. Very bald, and I've forgotten where I was going with that joke. Sorry, Patty. So anyway, we've got a Celica, a Mustang, and an A3. Personally, well, I think my voice just unbroke there for a second. Personally, if I had to pick one car out of these that wasn't my 240, I'd go for the A3 because four-wheel drive. Because you don't want front-wheel drive on a circuit like this because you will understeer. I mean, the Mustang's too heavy to really do anything, so that'll oversteer like hell. But yeah, I mean, we've got the power. We also have the touch in the form of the tyres. However, the hell that is the tyres does not break loose. And I've forgotten the rest of the words to that Stan Bush song I was trying to quote in a sort of snarky style. Oh well! There's still cars, still vroom vroom shiny colours vroom, so keep watching you people, because I promise. Something might happen. Dread Industries does not actually acknowledge anything might actually happen. You keep watching at your own risk. Dread Industries is not held responsible for any loss of brains, nerve, muscle, bowel control, or sudden urge to go and watch Red Dwarf. Thank you for your time. We now return you to your regularly scheduled gibbering of complete and utter maniacism. Thank you. So, third lap and we're getting on for nine seconds lead. Nine seconds! That's three seconds a lap! And this isn't exactly a long track. I mean, if you want the tuning way I've done this, it's basically you get the 240SX, you put all the unique handling upgrades on it, and then you go back to episode 17 and write down the numbers I used for that. Okay? I mean, they're not my numbers. I found them on the internet ages ago, and I don't even know if the site I got them from is still there. But hey, okay. We've done this race. You've got some more content, so everybody's happy. Except for the fact I've now got to do a hell of a lot of stuff in Jackson Heights. Shh. 
Shut up, Rachel. I'm the storyteller here, not you. Okay, so after that unwarranted interruption, I shall leave you with that. You've been a wonderful audience. Don't forget to rate, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, bye! <laughs>